Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw, 13th of January 2020. We kick off the show with Randy Orton making his way to the ring. He posed on the turnbuckle and then tells AJ to get out there. He says he's favourite to win the Royal Rumble and he will hit AJ with the three most dangerous letters in WWE. RK, AJ comes out. He's like, what are you going to do? Brag and pretend about having another knee injury? I really thought you were hurt. And then you RKO'd me. I was trying to be sympathetic last week. AJ, you kicked a crutch from under his foot, under him, and then made him pick it up. Didn't seem very sympathetic to me last week, did you? Uh, he says, it's not true. You missed him hitting the sweetest RKO last week. Many have said it's the best RKO they've ever seen. People said it was phenomenal. It was so good that maybe it is all he needs to throw 29 other people over the top rope to win. That includes AJ Star uh, that includes Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, and then McIntyre. Draw McIntyre comes out and says he's had a few tough weeks with his opponents. He's had to deal with a conga line last week and overcome this. He's seeking some better opponents. My Claymore is uh, bigger and better than your RKO or Styles Clash. He wants to show who's the favourite to win the Royal Rumble. Do you, do you want to see us talking all night or how about a triple threat match? So then we go to the match. First off, this opening segment, not bad. Going to give it a 7 out of 10. Very entertaining. I like the dynamic between Randy and AJ. And McIntyre's really, really good. Uh, then we start the match. Um, at one point, well, in the very beginning, Orton goes for an elevated DDT. Anderson uh, comes out to save him. Uh, he saves him. Gallows gets a Claymore. Anderson, uh, Anderson gets an RKO. Um, we get to near the end of the match. Orton walks around the ring. Twist on the mat. Goes for RKO. Styles with the roll up for a near fall. Orton with an RKO. But Drew McIntyre with a Claymore to Orton. Drew gets the three count on AJ Styles. At uh, one point, um, I believe, oh yeah, Orton does hit a Stars Clash during the match, which is like a big screw you to AJ Stars, which was nice. Match was alright, I'm going to give it a three, uh, 2.75 out of 5. We then have AOP in the locker room, and then Seth enters. He said he hopes that you are excited back tonight as he is. Opportunities don't come like this very often. The fist fight is an opportunity. They will demonstrate if you're not with us, you're against us. It would uh, behoove you to be with them because no one can stop them. Can Kevin stop them? Can Samoa Joe stop them? Can Big Show stop them? This is unstoppable. This is the destiny of Monday Night Raw. He has sacri I've sacrificed everything, Seth Rollins says. He sacrificed more than anyone would understand to ensure the destiny stays intact. They must impose their will. They must show what happens when you do not embrace the Monday Night Messiah. Uh, good promo. 6 out of 10. We then go to Ricochet versus Mojo Rawley. Ricochet with a 3.30 splash for the 3 count. 2.5 out of 5. Fairly average match. Very, very good win for Ricochet. I like the, the feature in Mojo Rawley more as well. He's a very interesting character. and I'm not, It's nice to see him getting featured a little bit. Uh, but then we have the Street Profits in the back, 1 out of 10. We then swiftly move on to match 3, Charlotte versus Sarah Logan. Figure 4 into a figure 8, Sarah taps out. After the match, Charlotte tosses Sarah over the top rope. Uh, match was 2 out of 5, if it wasn't really much at all, to be fair. You know what? I'm not even going to rate it. There was literally like three moves in it. Not even rateable. Just kind of Charlotte showing dominance there. Uh, then Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens are in the back. Kevin Owens is talking about the rules. Joe's like, don't worry about the rules. We're, we're in a fight and our opponent's on the ground. Big Show shows up and he tells Kevin not to stress about the rules. We will have this size 7X fist. And he said this needs... To reintroduce itself to Seth Rollins. Kevin and Joe agree with the plan. 5 out of 10. Fairly average. Then Paul Heyman 
makes his way to the ring. Uh, he says, you all need to show some... Uh, God, this person did a lot of my mistakes. Some appreciation for the champion. He introduces himself as client to the men, women and things of Kentucky. Paul points out how insulted he is that the crowd repeats what he says. He said the advocate for the crowd does not appreciate Paul, so uh, they leave. They start chanting, you suck. They get back into the ring. Uh, they t Paul Heyman just pulls a typical promo talking about winning the Royal Rumble. Uh, Paul says his spoilers will tell the future and will set you. And then oh, Truth comes out and he says... I'm glad you called me out. He said he's going to set him off. He saw something about the Royal Rumble. You might be the most favourite to win the Royal Rumble. He said his childhood teacher, John Cena, taught him to never give up. True says he is the 24-7-48-7-7-11-I-9-5 South in Lexington, Kentucky, European t TV champion. And is in the Royal Rumble. True says, with that being said, he isn't the size of a dog in the fight. It's the fight in the dog. You may be a big, big, big man, but Truth says he knows you will go flying over the top rope. Paul Heyman. Brock's just laughing, and Paul's like, I'm not in the Royal Rumble. Brock Lesnar is. And he says, My bad, for the first time ever, uh, the 24 7 blah, 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 is officially out of the Royal Rumble. Truth says that Paul talks a lot. You keep going on and on and on, and sleeping noises. Truth says Paul gives away all the spoilers and he does not like spoilers. He does not want Brett Lesnar to take him to Suplex City. Yeah, I'm going to assume he says Suplex City. Oh, uh, S I O U X Falls City. And Paul um, corrects him saying it's Suplex City. Paul says Truth is not funny and nobody likes him. Truth says I have one question for Brock What's up? And then our Truth does a split. Ask two stones, uh, starts to wrap, turns around into a clothesline. Uh, Brock Lesnar with an F5, but there's no referee in the ring, so Brock will not become the 24-7 champion. Brock says, that's what's up. You know what? 10 out of 10. It's freaking 10 out of 10, guys. Our truth is just so damn funny. Honestly, I love our truth right now. I mean, Brock showed up again, and you know what? He's going. He's appearing next week, and then he'll be at Royal Rumble. He's showing up four times in a month. Jesus Christ! Brock Lesnar's going to have to retire early after this amount of work he's doing for a week, a month, a year. Bloody hell! Um, but yeah, amazing segment. Then he's being helped up the ramp. Mojo Rawley with a boot, and he becomes a new. 24-7 champion. Mojo said, I'm not running from anybody. Come and get me. Not going to rate it, really. Well, yeah, there wasn't really much that one, so... Uh, then we go to... Uh, Bobby Lashley versus Rusev. Liv Morgan, for some reason, comes out and starts... Um, going after Lana and... Uh, Lana throws a drink in Liv Morgan's Liv Morgan's face and then sends her into the ringside barrier. Lashley was a spare for the three count. Uh, one out of ten, one out of five for the match. Nice that Liv came out. Didn't do enough to save the rating there. Then Charlie Caruso is interrupted by Bobby Lashley and Lana. Bobby says that they have bigger problems to deal with and Russo. Lon talks about the troll and stalker Liv Morgan. She comes out during Bobby's matches and tries to intimidate him. Lana says that they'll have a huge issue to s situation to settle. Lana makes a challenge for next week to have a mixed uh, tag match. Bobby and her against Liv and Rusev. Bobby wants to know what the hell she's doing. Lana says she won't be intimidated and then goes on a massive rant as Bobby walks off. 4 out of 10. Then we have uh, the Viking Raiders versus uh, the Singh Brothers. Viking experience, sorry, count, not going to rate it because it's just a jobber match. I don't rate jobber matches, but yeah, they got to win over the Singh Brothers. Then Rusev and Liv Morgan are in the back. Rusev calls them a waste of breath. Bobby and Lana deserve each other. You want to fight, you deserve each other. They will fight you no matter what. Liv says she doesn't make promises you won't keep. 
She said she's the living embodiment of your karma, and karma is a bitch. Not the wrestling karma. Karma is in karma. Uh, then we move on to Becky Lynch making her way to the ring for the contract sign between her and Asuka. Becky doesn't say anything before Asuka comes out. Asuka signs a contract, Becky signs a contract, grey mist in Becky's face, and Asuka screams in Japanese. Uh, then Becky's getting treated for it. Like I just want to point out the ironic thing here is that Asuka did their grey mist, and if uh, Becky hadn't have put her hands all over her face, it wouldn't have smeared anywhere, because she, be- she didn't even get her in the eyes. Uh, and then Becky cuts a promo, saying... When they give you money and praise, it is poison for those who fight for a living. Asuka is angry with, while Becky says she's content. She's been trying to find an anger she can use. When you touch her, it causes bad, her, her badness to rise in her. She does not care if she is trying to hide her from Becky. If she's going down, she'll take Asuka down with her. Overall, the segment can get a 5.5 out of 10. Average contract signing. Uh, then... Selena Vega has an interview uh, with Sarah Schreiber with Andrade. Selena says Sarah's not qualified to talk to them. There's a lot between Andrade and the disgraced legend of Rey Mysterio. They called the authorities because they stole his championship last week. He is a disgrace to all Latinos and a bad example to his son Dominic and all of his children. Uh, Yeah, very, very good promo. I like these two. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Then when Mysterio is asked what he thinks about the comments, he said, I'm being accused of being a criminal and unfit to represent my people. He represents his people with heart. Andrade thinks he can get away with anything after injuring Huberto. This is not funny. Andrade tried to injure one of the most promising rookies. Ray said he loves the idea of a ladder match. He's willing to make a sacrifice to his career and accept the consequences. Next thing, not only will he take back the United States Championship, he will take back the United States Championship from you. Good promo, 5.5 out of 10. We then go to uh, Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy. Um, Black Mass, Murphy kicked in big quotations out. Uh, Black getting back up for another Black Mass. Uh, yeah, match can get 3.25 out of 5. Very, very good match. Uh, then we see Buddy Murphy still at ringside when Eric Rowan comes out. Just literally not moving. Um, uh, Charlie Caruso says, I've got a question for you. He's like, not now. So we had Eric Rowan um, versus Roop Arena Victim. I don't know if that was his wrestling name or this is just what the person put on here. Rowan sends his opponent to the floor. He says he wants to show you. He reaches in the cage and his hand gets bit by whatever's in the cage. He gets back in the ring, hits a splash in the corner, claw slam for the three count. Not going to rate it, but I love the fact that they're moving more on with this cage. Uh, We then go to the fist fight match. Uh, Aiken Reza and Seth Rollins versus Big Show, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Um, Big Show gets um, triple teamed before Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens come out. They run out. They have a big brawl. Um, AOP stay on the stage with Kevin Owens and Seth, and um, Samoa Joe where Seth Rollins and Big Show go down to the ring. At one point, uh, Samoa Joe, Aiken and Reza were where the announce table was were and Samoa Joe was on uh, Kevin Owens was on the stage and he ran across the stage not the actual stage the like the back of the stage across it and then jumped off it looked fucking sick that moment gets a 10 out of 10 absolutely amazing uh, then they attack Joe and put Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe through the table with Joe being on top of it and choke slamming uh, KO on top of him um, while this is going on, Seth Rollins um, got sent to the outside. 
sees Buddy Murphy there and she's like, help, help me. Samoa Joe grabs Seth Rollins, brings him in the ring, chokes Lamb, uh, winds up for a punch. Buddy Murphy with a low blow to Big Show. Seth Rollins uh, and Buddy Murphy put Show through the table. Um, the AOP then makes their way to the ring. Uh, Show sends Murphy over the top. Um, goes up for a Vader bomb, but Aikman and Razor double power bomb him. Murphy holds Show, blackout, referee calls for the bat. After the match, Seth and Buddy hug, and then they all hold their hands up high. So, yes, Buddy Murphy has joined has joined AOP and Seth Rollins. That itself can get a 10 out of 10. The match itself can get a 3 out of 5. It was actually very entertaining. Uh, KO really made me impressed with that while running across the um, stage. The sta yeah, stage. And just overall the Buddy Murphy bit in it was really, really good. So I can't wait to see what they do next week. You know what? I actually want to tune into Monday Night Raw to see what the hell is going to carry on. Good job, WWE. You ended the show on a good note. And I'm going to give you a 6 out of 10 for this show because overall it was above average. It was an enjoyable watch, to be fair. The third hour definitely heated up. I enjoyed the show. Now, as always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please smash that like button, share and subscribe, and I shall catch you all. Laters! Bye!